Welcome to the car guys and this week I am talking Porsche and more specifically GT car prices crashing, premiums evaporating and hundreds of unwanted electric Taycans choking the dealer network. 2024 is seeing a massive market correction that may result in a complete turnaround of how Porsche dealers treat their customers. And just possibly it might mean a fair chance to get the cars that we want at the right price and without having to buy five McCann's first. Yes, it really does seem that the jig is up and that might actually be great news for real Porsche enthusiasts instead of Porsche speculators. So this week I'm going to look at who is happy about it and what does it mean for Porsche. Contrary to what some of you might think, especially those who inhabit certain internet forums, I don't actually hate Porsche. And I don't even have a big problem with Porsche authorised dealers. Yes, I may have got a bit sweary and a bit shouty about one of them. F you. F you. But for those of you who actually paid attention to my video and listened, you'll remember it was all about customer service and not allocations. And the fact that I called them out about it still annoys them to this day. As many of you who have written to me can confirm, customer service levels at Porsche are often extremely poor because a situation has been created that meant they did not actually have to chase customers for sales. And as soon as that happens, dealers get lazy. They focus on their mates and clandestine brown envelope arrangements and regular Porsche enthusiasts get the shaft. You can try it for yourself actually. Visit a Porsche dealer and walk around the cars for sale and see how long it takes for a salesman to notice you. My record is 40 minutes, but I'm not going to tell you where that was. Why has this happened? Well, Porsche dealers stopped needing to care about people that walk through the door because the sweet cars were in short supply and already spoken for. A simple inquiry about a GT3, say, was often met, and I'm not joking here, by a snort of laughter, followed by a sucking through the teeth. <sighs> but now it seems, for a combination of reasons that we're going to explore this week, that situation is rapidly changing. And it might just usher in a new era of positive customer service, which in my book is a damn good thing. Quick primer on my Porsche history before we get started, so that will answer the how full of sh question that you may be asking yourself. I bought my first 993-911 in 1998, had two 996 GC3s in 2003 and 2004, a 997 Turbo S in 2012, a 3.2 Carrera, Super Sport Targa and 930 Turbo in 2018, Carrera T in 2018, 991.2 GT3 Touring you see here in 2018, a 718 Boxster S in 2019, 718 Boxster Spider in 2019 and then a 993 C4S in 2021. Now with that all out of the way, on to Act 2. Why are Porsche prices and premiums crashing and why are there so many GT cars for sale? Now the first thing to say is that Porsche makes fundamentally amazing cars, well engineered, well deserving of their prestige reputation. It is no understatement to say that there really is a Porsche for everyone. Whether it's the base level 911, the Boxsters, Cayman, Cayennes, Macans, and even the Taycan, they're all brilliant. But some are more brilliant than others. Since around 2010, Porsche cars from its Visac GT department have been harder to order, attained almost mythical status with collectors, and of course, commanded high premiums on the second-hand market. And unfortunately, the pursuit of those special cars and their allocation is the source of most of the discontent with Porsche dealers. It is also where all of the speculation and car flipping occurs. So what's changed and why has it all recently come crashing down? Instead of a buoyant Porsche market, we have now seen prices for GT cars like the GT3 and GT3 Touring plummeting. And that premium great white hope, the Taycan, is now available to buy for a third of its price. GT3 Tourings in the UK were north of 210,000 and are now 170 to 180. GT3s were 200 and you can now get them for 160. And as you'll soon see, there are many available. So what on earth is going on? Well, it's this. Number one, oversupply. Number two, the lack of finance and credit terms. And number three, too many models from Porsche. Oversupply. 
It's no secret that Porsche now builds far more GT3s and GT3 Tourings than previous generations, and that means three things. More customers getting them, which is a good thing. More customers therefore sell them in the hope of making money, and they're becoming a lot more common. And thanks to the law of supply and demand, that means prices start to crash because they are ubiquitous. GT3 Tourings in particular are a real disappointment for the 992 generation because the original 991.2 was extremely rare and we all hoped it would be the same for the 992. But it's not, my friends, and honestly, it now feels like there are more Tourings than standard GT3s. Let's have a quick look at cars for sale right now on Auto Trader, which includes cars sold at Porsche dealers. And well, 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 what do we have here? There are currently 43 992 GT3s for sale and 26 992 Tourings. And things are even worse for Porsche's great electric hope, the Taycan. Currently, there are 772 Taycans for sale in the UK, including 104 Turbo S's, 117 Turbos, and I can't believe this, 693 Performance Pluses. Those are terrifying numbers, especially when you consider that it's a relatively new model and also the increasing distrust of the benefit of electric cars. And what's more, you can now pick up a Taycan that would have been more than £100,000 for just over 40. And that situation hasn't helped because Porsche has just announced the new, much better Taycan for sale soon. Who on earth is going to buy an old electric car with an expensive battery and low range when the shiny new one is coming along right after it with improvements in every way? The once mighty Turbo S is one of the biggest casualties. There are 138 for sale right now with no premium. And remember, these were going for 50 over until just recently. And out of interest, guess how many 991.2 GT3 Tourings like this one are for sale right now? Nope, you're all wrong. It's one. One. And why is that, Damien? Well, it's because they didn't make that many of them. And those people that have got them really want to keep them. They treasure them. And more importantly, they don't want to trade them for the next shiny thing. This is my 911 991.2 GT3 Touring, and because I hadn't spent enough money or greased enough palms with my local dealer, I wasn't able to get it new. Instead, I had to buy it from someone who had got an allocation, and he promptly sold it on for approximately £70,000 profit. And then it was sold again before I paid just over £200,000 for it. Why did I do this? Well, because I really wanted this particular model and I had no chance of getting it on my own. But it did mean that I couldn't have my own exterior colour and I had no choice of spec. As it turns out though, that was a relatively smart move because there are only 47 right-hand drive UK cars. Lack of credit. If you still pay attention to legacy media, then you will no doubt be aware that the world has gone to hell in a handbasket and that free and low interest rate credit terms have all but withdrawn by lenders. The era of easy money is over and the world tightens its belt. This immediately eliminates all those car buyers who are using credit to purchase these exclusive models. And since the majority of Porsche GT cars were purchased on finance, that means a vast proportion of customers have now walked away from the table. In many cases, they're dumping their orders before the cars are delivered. If you were recently offered a car you didn't expect, now you know why. And all those cars hitting the second-hand market hoping to be snapped up by eager finance-laden buyers are now gathering dust, as everyone cancels non-essential expenditure. This, of course, is affecting the whole car market in 2024, and if you've got cash in the bank, you can bag some real deals. Too many models from Porsche. When Porsche had the 996-911, there were three special GT cars. The GT3, GT3 RS, and the GT2. That's it. Since then, though, Porsche's been expanding the number of special and limited cars produced. So for the current 992, there are, wait for it, six of them. The GT3, GT3 Touring, GT3 RS, Sport Classic, 911 Dakar, and the superb new edition, the ST. And don't forget, we haven't even seen the GT2 or the GT2 RS yet, which are sure to come along with the 992.2 generation. So that would be eight special models. And this is where the dreaded Porsche authorised dealer allocation game that everyone hates rears its ugly head. 
Put simply, the very highest of customer spenders get all the special cars, not those enthusiasts who plan to keep them and drive them. In exchange for a chance to buy the next special car, the dealer then insists that the cars are given back to them to sell so that they can make the additional profit from the increase in value that the rarity of the car commands. Why do you think there are so many GT3 RSs being sold for £150,000 above list with less than 100 miles on the clock? Right now we have 14 GT3 RSs with delivery mileage and £200,000 premiums. That's a huge markup but many expected it to be much higher, and all are suspiciously available from Porsche authorised dealers. How many will sit around with few people prepared to pay those sort of premiums? The 911 Dakar, personally this model does nothing for me whatsoever, but it's limited to 2,500 units, and you can now see that there are currently 18 of them for sale in the UK at a mere 50,000 premium. And what's this? The limited 1250 unit Sport Classic. And there are currently five for sale at a £100,000 premium and from Porsche dealers like Colchester, Bournemouth and Cambridge. And the once humble Cayman and Boxster also now have the GT variants, the GT4, GT4 RS and 718 Spider RS. As you can see, it looks like there are currently 17 GT4 RS customers looking to sell their cars right now for a whacking profit. And here's something I bet you didn't realise. Curiously, the number of new special GT cars from Porsche actually directly negatively affects the values of GT3s. Here's how. More special cars means speculators buy the GT3s and Tourings in order to get the allocation for some of the rarer ones. And then of course, they quickly dump them onto the market because the new cars are coming. Loads of new GT3s on the market means prices will of course drop because there's much wider choice and fewer buyers. In the majority of the world, you've got the Porsche GT car market with a limited supply being brought by a small number of chosen customers and dominated by massive premiums on the secondhand market. But in America, land of the free, the dealers just add the market adjustment, i.e. the speculation price, to the cost of the new car, which means that GT cars are ferociously expensive to buy in the first place. And in my mind, it's deeply, deeply wrong. Now, to be fair, Porsche itself is looking into ways to combat the flipping of its special cars following widespread complaints. Just recently, with the Simply Superb ST Special Edition, Porsche only supplied the car on a one-year lease, which meant the car could not be transferred to another owner. Has it worked? Well, there's not a single ST for sale right now, so perhaps it has worked. But more likely, these cars have still been sold for eye-watering sums, but the original owner has just kept the registration certificate until the lease expires. Where there's a car flipping will, there's a car flipping way. And now we get to 2024 and specifically today. Porsche has gone from having a tightly controlled low number of super special GT cars that command premiums to a market flooded with special cars and once ironclad secondhand values in freefall. So who is happy about it? Well, unsurprisingly, me for one. And not in a gloating, I told you so kind of way. If it means that GT cars are available without huge premiums, that's a good thing. And also the slowdown in sales may mean dealers start treating customers better in the future. And that can only be a good thing. My hope is that a squeeze on credit, a lack of customers and a greater number of cancelled orders may actually lead to Porsche dealers valuing customer relationships with the sort of people who are into Porsches because they love them not because they're in it to make a quick buck. Wouldn't that be nice? Thank you for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and found it entertaining and thought provoking. If you like what we're doing on the car guys, please subscribe, leave comments and likes. There'll be another episode next week.